okay, um, I guess I'm just going to do a little video blog about the service last night, Wednesday night service at Ignite. It was awesome. It was totally, totally awesome. One Minute Halo was there. They rocked it. It was really cool to finally get a chance to see them jam, see Joey and the guys do what they do. It was a blast. Um, the night started off with a bunch of prize giveaways that we got donated from Anchor Blue, all kinds of stuff, shirts, pants, accessories, um, sunglasses. We gave away Smart Water, that Smart Water came and dropped off. It was awesome. Uh, Drew was there from Power FM. Thanks, buddy. Uh, and then we had the Skate Disciples there with uh, Pastor Daryl, and they did a skate demo in the parking lot. It was cool. Cynthia and I were out there like three in the afternoon in the blazing Texas sun, uh, setting up tents and stuff like that. Starbucks was there, giving out free Starbucks and all that kind of stuff. It was cool. Sean came out and DJ'd. And uh, we kicked the thing off with a bunch of prizes. We uh, took everybody out, uh, did a 10 minute warm up session, and then a best trick competition. And uh, it was slamming, man. There was some, there was some good riders there. Uh, and then we came back inside, and uh, we kicked off the concert, which was, which was totally, totally awesome. These guys were really good. It was, it was cool to see that they loved God, and uh, and they were hardcore. Uh, I don't, if you've never seen them, check them out. Uh, Joey, who goes to goes to the church with us, he's got dreads, uh, big, long, long dreads. Check out the uh, check out the, the the highlight clips of the night on my on my MySpace page, uh, which is forward slash Luke Huck, or check them out here on this YouTube page. I'll get those posted up right away. But it was awesome. Um, the band jammed, and. Uh, uh, after they were done playing, they uh, they came down and, and, and I got up and spoke. And, and the thing that I spoke about was I spoke out of uh, Matthew where uh, the disciples were asking Jesus, you know, uh, when the, uh, the prophecies that he had just given them about the dest destruction of the temple, when would these things start to happen and what would be the signs of the times and Jesus starts out the parable by saying that, you know, uh, or, well, the Bible starts out by saying that the disciples had um, noticed all of like the beautiful uh, stones and gems that were adorning the temple. And, uh, and Jesus says that, you know, all of this is going to be destroyed. And, uh, and to watch for these signs and one of the signs being that many would come in Jesus' name saying, I am he. And I use that as a parallel to our lives being a temple and how that deception uh, plays out in your and my uh, lives in the day that we live in is that there's so many things, material things, um, that come and they try to take the place of who Christ is supposed to be in our life, he's really supposed to be the, the gem and the, the beautiful stone that is adorning our temples, our lives, but uh, many come saying that I am he uh, and try to take his place and, uh, and all of those things are going to crumble, you know, and, um, you know, I was reminded of the scripture uh, where Peter uh, is speaking with Jesus and here Jesus is and I spoke about this last night and here Jesus is and uh, he he says to here he is and he's doing all of these miracles and nobody knows really who he is you know and he's teaching stuff stuff that's kind of like out there um, in, in you know in in respect to what all of the uh, the uh, you know, many of the Jewish leaders were were teaching at that time, and so he's curious to see if his followers, his main guys, have have started to uh, detect who he is. And so he says to Peter, he says, "Well, Peter, you know, they follow me everywhere, 
You know, I, I, I can't get away from the people. They see me doing the miracles. Who, who do they say that I am? Who do, they think that, who do they think they're following? Who do they think they ask to do these miracles? And Peter says, well, some say Elijah, you know, some say Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And Jesus looks at Peter and he says, okay, so who do you say that I am? And Peter pauses and he obviously, uh, he had a revelation and he looks up and he says, well, you're the Christ. And, and from a Hebrew perspective, somebody raised in Judaism, the, the prophecy of the Christ was like, you know, that was like <laughs> huge. And Jesus hadn't said that he was the Christ. What that meant that was that he was the burden removing, the yoke destroying power of God and that he was the son of God. And it was this revelation that Jesus then said, flesh and blood cannot reveal this to you. It has to come from God and upon this rock, I will build my house. And, and that's what I spoke about last night was the power of revelation. And that's what I believe every young person has to have is a revelation of who Christ is in their lives because it's not about a church service, you know, it's not about a cool youth group or a really dope concert. It's about a revelation of, of who Christ is and what that means to you because that revelation, not that religion, not that theology, not that set of rules and regulations, but the revelation of who he is and what he st stood for will determine how you'll spend the rest of your life. And, you know, we're coming up on Rosh Hashanah which biblically is a time that, you know, is it, it's reasonable to to think that Jesus could come back, and we're living in a, a a crazy time right now. And you, all you have to do is turn on the news, turn on the TV, turn on MTV, and you see that you know th there's many who are coming in His name, and 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 many different forces uh, who are trying to. Uh, say that I am he like Jesus warned about but they're not they're not him there's only one Jesus and there's only one Christ and that revelation is coming to the world